All right, hello again. Hello. Good morning. Okay. Okay, I think somebody had asked me and I, I put them off about uh, when the next uh, test was going to be due. I apologize for that. I was going to look at it later on in, in the period last time and I forgot to do it. Okay, so we're looking at uh, 220, 228. The test two homework is going to be due. So that's about what, uh, eight. Uh, nine days from now. Okay, so uh, the and the test test two will be due on three one. That's March first, which I guess is is what uh, two weeks from now, right? Uh, okay, I think I've got the uh, I think I've got the dates wrong here. Sorry. So two twenty eight. That's when the test test two homework is due. Three one. That's when test two is due. I guess that is in in two weeks. So that was, this would be. 13 days, I suppose. This doesn't seem like the math is right on that. 11, 12, maybe I'm, no, I guess that's yeah, 11 days from now. It's 11 days from now. And this is 12 days from now. All right. Now Next we're... Sunday and the Monday after. Right. There we go. Thank you. Yeah. Of, yes, that's right. Of next week. That's right. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. So it looks like the, and uh, yeah, it's hang, is that, um, Hang on, is that um, three one is a is three one a Wednesday or a or a Monday? It's a Monday. It's a Monday. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I might have mixed up these dates here, because I think I'm meaning to have test test two due on uh, the the Wednesday before spring break. All right, so I think I will um I'll adjust those dates there. Sorry about that, folks. I think I um. I think I screwed that up a bit. All right, no, not to not to worry. So it looks like you'll get an extra couple of days. It'll be, I'm gonna change this to, I'll change it on the syllabus and I'll change it on the thing, of course. <clears throat> so if it, so we'll make it three, three for when the test is going to be due. And the homework will be due on, three two sorry that's uh, that's why i was mixed up here okay and then of course i'll adjust the i'll adjust the due dates as well and i'll do that after class all right so, so thanks for for whoever i was asking me to to look into that all right we'll go back to where we were and that was on module 10 yeah, I had always wanted um, wanted test two due be on the last day. There'll be no class that day, of course, as as we as that's the way we've been doing it. All right, uh, let's see, course content, test two. So yes, it looks like test two will be due um, two weeks from today. We'll do module 10 today, which is Wednesday. We'll do module 11 on Monday. Module 12 will be next Wednesday, and then we'll have review on that Monday. And then, uh, then, the, then the test will be due on that, uh, that Wednesday. All right, and that gives us plenty of time to go over everything we need to go over here. All right, let's look at, oops, you don't want that, do you?
let's look at solutions. Now, when we're talking about concentrations and solutions, and we'll be doing a lot more of this when we get to test four as well, what we're generally talking about is this kind of situation. We'll have a we'll have a solvent. We'll have a solute. So the solvent is doing is is doing the dissolving. The solute can actually be a liquid or solid. Now that goes into the solvent and then what we end up with is something called a solution. Usually we're talking about a solute that's going to completely dissolve in the solvent and that gives us a solution which is really solute plus solvent. I think that's important to note. Anybody got any questions so far? When we're talking about measurement of concentration then, it's always got to be something, it's, it's always, concentration is always really about some amount of solute in or for every, remember that line means in or for every amount of solvent or possibly solution. So that's generally what concentration is going to consist of. Solute will be on top and the amount of solvent or solute, so amount of solv solvent or solution is going to be on the bottom. What we're going to focus on is the concentration measurement of moles per litre. So what is this? Moles is going to be moles of solute. In the case of molarity, which is we call big M here, moles per litre, it's going to be moles over litres, which is volume of solution. Okay, so that's, so that's our definition of concentration. Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay. Now I've got a discussion in here about electrolytes and stuff, which we're not going to go into here, but you can read about it. We're going to now start on solution stoichiometry, which is going to combine the concepts we talked about in module nine with the concepts that we talked about, well, we're, we're, that we're going to talk about here with regard to the solution concentration of moles per litre. Now, one thing that you're never going to see here in this module is that I'm never going to be using the 22.414 litres liters of gas at STP. Now, this is important to note that this is about gases at STP. This is not for solutions. Now, it's just, this doesn't stop people using it or trying to use it in, the, in module 10, but it's not supposed to be here. So we won't be touching that 22.414. You'll never see me use it in any of these, in any of these kinds of uh, calculations. So I've got a little drawing here. It's pretty much the same as what I did. If you take a mole of sugar, a mole of sugar is around about well, 340 grams, something like that. And you stick it into a liter of water and you stir it around, and you dissolve it. What you'll have is one mole of liter, uh, one mole of sugar dissolved in one liter of water. So the concentration would be one mole per liter. That's one mole of sugar per liter of water or one mole of sugar per liter of solution, which includes, of course, the sugar. Now the sugar in and of itself doesn't add much to the volume because it's a solid, 
And that's something that we also notice as well is that when we add solids to liquids, we tend not to get a huge increase in, in volume. It's, it's negligible or it's not really, it's something we need to consider. When we're doing any concentration kinds of problems, we can always use moles as our waypoint. It's always going to be something that we can always find that will lead to, be able to lead to something else. Now, rather than using this kind of flow chart here, I have a preference for, <coughs> excuse me. For just manipulating the concentration equation that I showed you earlier. So I'll, I'll go back and write this down. So moles of solute, liters of solution. Sorry about the dog in the background there. Then we can say that moles of solute is equal to concentration times liters of solution. So you can see I'm just manipulating it there. And the last one I'm looking at here will be liters of solution. Or if you like volume. Okay, so volume here as well. And liters of solution is going to be concentration divided by moles. Oh, sorry, moles divided by concentration. Is that moles of solute divided by concentration. Now, this is interesting, this moles of solute divided by concentration. I'm going to give an alternative to that as well. So moles of solute times one over concentration. And we'll be using that in some of our equations here. All right, so that's, those are going to be the basis of what we're going to be working with. So you don't really need this flow chart. I mean, it's somewhat useful, but it's, uh, it's really just a, it's kind of like a crutch really. I think it's just easier to just know that concentration is moles of solute divided by liters of solution. And then we can manipulate it from there depending upon what we're looking for. So I'm going to leave that up and we'll look at, we'll look at some ways that we can use these equations in order to, and let me see, I'm going to get another, let me get another palette here. And I'll be using both of these to, to work with. So it says, what is the molarity of 20.0 grams of sodium hydroxide NaOH in 200.0 mils of water? When I use the word molarity, molarity is interchangeably used. Molarity is interchangeably used with concentration. So whenever you see either of those terms, you can use them pretty much the same way. Now, the thing is the concentration is a more general term because there's lots of different ways to express concentration and molarity is simply one of them. Molarity is always moles per litre, but concentration in its more pure form, I suppose, is a really the amount of solute over the amount of solvent or solution so, and then then that's a very that's a very much broader term but just realize that we can use use these either way whenever i talk about molarity the units can be expressed in either moles per liter or if you want big m but big m is never just moles so how do we deal with that well looking at what we're the information we're given I think I'd be inclined to start with the 20.0 grams of NaOH because I know that that can be easily expressed in moles, which is what I would be inclined to do first. So I'd start out with 20.0 grams. I'm not going to worry so much about 
putting in, well, I suppose I will. I will put in the NOH as well. That way we'll, we can be more consistent about it. So my first thing, I'll, I'll get the moles of NOH. And that would be over the molecular weight, which of course we calculate by going to the periodic table. So at this point, if I stopped right here, I'd have moles of NaOH. Now, why is this important? Well, let's go back to what we're looking for here. We're looking for molarity. And according to the equation I have for molarity is moles of solute, which is why I found the moles of solute first, divided by liters of solution. Okay, so liters of solution is what we're looking for here. Now I do have milliliters of water here. So what I can do is do times and it will be one over 200.0 mils. Now you might be wondering, well, times one what? Well, what we're doing here, if we go back to the original equation, it's moles of solute divided by liters of solution. I currently have milliliters of solution here, but what I'm focusing on here is the divide by part. If I want to express division, what I do is I do times one over the volume. That's the same as dividing by 200.0 mils. Does anybody have any questions so far? I'm not done yet, by the way. Okay, so the next thing we need to make this liters. So what I do is I'll put liters on the bottom because I know liters need to go on the bottom. Milliliters need to go on top to cancel. So that'll be 1000 mils over one liter. And then that gives me my result, which is going to end up being 2.50 big M. Now, as far as sig figs go, and you know we can use big M or moles per liter, either one of those is going to be fine. We've got three sig figs in 20.0. We've got four sig figs on the 200.0. So the answer comes out to be three sig figs at the end. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Okay. I can't really believe it, but uh, anyway. How many grams of sodium hydroxide would be required to make 60.0 mils of a 3.50 molar solution of sodium hydroxide? So again, I, I want to try and find moles so that I can get to grams. That would be my first, that would be my, my first priority. So when I'm looking for moles, it's going to be concentration times volume of solution in liters, according to the equations I have on the other part of that there. Now you'll notice what I have is I have a, a concentration, which I'm going to express as moles per liter to make things a little bit easier for the dimensional analysis. If I multiply that by the volume, which is 60.0 mils, you can see that the liters and the mils won't cancel. I want to be left with moles here so I can convert that into grams. So what I'll do is I will do a conversion into liters. So I'll do milliliters on the bottom and liters on top here. The milliliters will cancel, be one liter over a thousand mils. At this point, if I was to stop, if I was to stop what I was doing, and I'll make this an AOH here, I would end up with moles of sodium hydroxide because you can see the liters will cancel, the milliliters will cancel, and I'll be left with moles. But I don't want moles, I want grams. So the moles will go on the bottom to cancel. Moles of NaOH. And then grams of NaOH is what I want and that's going to be on top. Now the relationship there is 40.08 grams per one mole of sodium hydroxide. And then that gives me my final answer, which would end up being, put that over there, 0.842 grams. And again, three sig figs, three sig figs, and we end up getting three sig figs in our answer. 
does anybody have any questions? So just to summarize what I'm doing here, I start off with my concentration, my base, my base equation here. Concentration is going to be moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liters. And then I can manipulate that to get whatever I need as the answer. And concentration is always going to be moles of solute. So I'm often find, trying to find moles of solute first. And in the case of find, trying to find grams, I need to get moles of solute, which will be concentration times volume of solution in liters. And that's exactly what I did in this equation here in order to obtain that. Does anybody have any questions? All right, what about if we have grams and we're trying to figure out the volume of water we need to get to a certain concentration. So this is a very important calculation that we tend to do in the lab a lot. If we have a certain amount of a compound and we want to figure out, well, how much solvent do we need to add in order to make a solution of a certain concentration, which is effectively what we're trying to, trying to achieve here. Now, in order to start this, we'll start off with the we'll start off with the grams, so ten point zero grams of uh, NaOH. Ten point zero grams of NaOH, and as you would probably guess, we'll try for we'll try to get to to moles first. Now remember we're looking for volume and if we're looking for volume you can see that volume will be moles of solute divided by the concentration. So that's sort of where I'm aiming to begin with. So I'll, I'll get my moles first which will be moles of solute. So moles of NaOH over grams of NaOH. And then we need to, according to my equation over here, we need, we've got moles of NaOH right now. We need to divide by the concentration. Now look what the concentration is. It's 0 0.560 moles per liter. But we want, we want to divide by that. So what would be, how would we do that? Well, what we do is we divide by one liter, well, we multiply by one liter over 0 0.560 moles of NaOH. Professor? Yes. Why would it be one liter and not just one like the last time you did it? Because if you look at concentration, it's moles per liter. And if you were to flip it over, the flip, it's effectively, think of this as being one liter down here. If the flip is effectively one liter over 0 0.560 moles. When we were dealing with just concentration, we were, sorry, with volume, it was just divided by one divided by a volume. Now we're, we're trying to divide by the concentration, which consists of moles per liter. So in order to do that, it's times one liter over 0 0.560 moles. Oh, I get it now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, yeah, so that would give us the, we're looking for the volume of water here. So if we were to just stop here, the answer would be 0.446 liters. And you can see that because I haven't been, I haven't asked in the question for a specific volume unit, but if you wanted milliliters, you could do it this way. You could do times 1000 mils over one liter, which would be 446 mils. So either way would be fine for that specific problem. Generally, I will tell you though, what kind of 
unit I want for the for the volume. Does anybody have any questions? How did you get four forty six ml? At times, well, this this would be times a thousand mils over one liter. So if you if you, if you did this math here, and you you multiplying the point four four six by a thousand. Okay, thank that. you. All right. Any other questions? That's probably the the most difficult one to to deal with because you have to flip the concentration over and that's often something a little bit difficult. Okay, one of the one one of the other things you'll see to express concentration is a mass percent situation. Now mass percent, if you think about it, a percent is always part divided by whole. If I wanted to figure out the percentage of females on the call, I'd count up the number of females and divide by everybody. So part divided by whole there. And then multiply that by 100%. It's the same kind of thing here. We have 34.5 grams of sodium iodide and we divide that by the total, which is the 34.5 plus the 100.0, and that gives us the mass percent. So that would be 25.7%. We've got to be a little bit careful here because this is a significant figure issue that we sometimes come across where we have to do the addition first, which gives us the number of places past the decimal. And then that would be four sig figs and this would be three sig figs on top to give us three sig figs at the end. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Now we can extend this now to a situation where we're dealing with stoichiometry. Now this is what we were dealing with back in module nine, which we were handling on Monday. Let's look at, oops, looks like I've got a couple of questions here in chat and I'm sorry about that. I, didn't see them. Oh, okay. And I'm going to again use a modified flowchart similar to the one that I was dealing with in module nine. So let me see if I can move this screen over a little bit here. Okay. And we'll move that down there and we'll start from here. Okay. All right, so we're doing, uh, again, it'll be QA gives mole A, gives mole, I'm sorry, not an arrow, mole B, and then, then QB. So what are these QAs and QBs that we're talking about here? Well, we're talking about mass. We're talking about volume of solution. or we're talking about concentration. Same with over here, what we could be looking for. We can look for mass, we can look for volume of solution, or we can look for concentration. We do have specific units as well. We'll have grams and grams for mass. We'll have liters for volume of solution. And for concentration, it'll be moles per liter. So this flow chart will form the basis of how we're going to solve any of these problems where we're given an equation and we're going from one thing to another. This is very much like what we were doing in module nine. All of the problems we've done up to this point today have just been dealing with one thing, like it was sodium hydroxide. In this case, we are now dealing with two different things. And the other thing that sets this apart is we are given an actual equation, a balanced equation to work with. So now we can actually solve these problems. So when we're looking at these kinds of problems, there's a challenge that appears because you'll notice there's lots of different numbers and it can be hard to know where to start. All right, so let's look at some clues in the question that can give us some ideas about 
about where, uh, where to start and of course where to finish as well. So when we've got the, we've got what volume of 0.532 molar HCl will react with 10.0 mils of 0.430 molar Na2CO3. One rule of thumb I can give you is that generally speaking, whatever you're given the most information about will be generally what you're going to start with. In this case, we're given two pieces of information about Na2CO3. We're given a volume and we're given a molarity. The HCl, we're only given a volume. So I think it should be fairly clear to you that we should be starting with the Na2CO3. The other thing is looking at what the question is asking about. So it says what volume of 0.532 molar HCl, which immediately tells you you're looking for something to do with HCl and we can never start with what we're looking for. So starting again with the Na2CO3 and then being mindful of what we need as we go across the flow chart here, we know we're looking for moles and what we have is a volume and a concentration. Now per what I was telling you earlier, if you're looking for moles of something, it's going to be concentration times volume in litres. And so that'll be our first, that'll be our first port of call. So we've got 0.4, you can either, now since we're multiplying these, you can start with the volume or you can start with the concentration. So let's start with the, we'll start with the concentration first. But there's nothing to stop me doing the volume first because we are multiplying them and A times B is equal to v, B times A. Now I, I like to use A and B sometimes but we'll, we'll, we'll just use the, the letters, so the actual compounds here to make things a bit more clear. So I'm starting with the concentration multiplied by the volume which is 10.0 mils. And then times, and we need to, we need to get this into liters because this needs to be liters of solution. So liters and milliliters down the bottom, one liter, a thousand mils. Okay. So what have we done so far? Well, what I've done, I knew I needed moles of Na2CO3. So I took the concentration and multiplied it by the liters of solution. It was milliliters first, I converted that to liters. Does anybody have any questions so far? All right, so where are we in the flow chart? We're right here. We're at moles of Na2CO3. The next thing we need to get is moles of HCl. So I know that moles of Na2CO3 go on the bottom to cancel. And I know moles of HCl will go on top. So what's the relationship between those? We get that from the actual reaction. We see there's two moles of HCl for every one mole of Na2CO3. And remember, you'll always be given a reaction in these kinds of problems. So where are we now? We're at here. We've just found moles of HCl. But what do we need? We need volume. How do we get volume? Let's go back to the equations I had over here. Volume or liters of solution can be found by taking moles of solute and dividing by the concentration or taking moles of solute and multiplying by one over the concentration, which is also the flip of the concentration that we discussed earlier. You'll notice we are given a concentration here of HCl. So it'll be times one liter over 0.532 moles of HCl we are effectively dividing by that concentration. Conveniently, you'll see that the moles of HCl cancel and we'll be left with liters at the end, which is what we had wanted. The final answer here, which could also be converted to liters if we wanted to, to milliliters, if we wanted to go one extra step, is going to be 0 0.0162 liters. All right, so take a look at that. Does anybody have any any questions about what we're doing here? Professor, 
Yes, exactly. Is there a reason that we put HCl on top of the Na2CO3? Yes, because when we're looking at the flow chart here, that's our next step. We found moles of Na2CO3 up to where the arrow is, okay? Our next step is to find moles of HCl. The moles of Na2CO3 then need to cancel, so those go on the bottom. And the moles of HCl, because that's what we're looking for at this next step, is what goes on top. Okay, thank you. Okay, they take it one step at a time. You know, you know, it's like my psychiatrist told me. I told him I was afraid of stairs. That's what he said, take it one step at a time. All right, does anybody have any questions? So you just take the molarity, make it, put it to liters, set it, e set it equal to the ratio then. Yes, it doesn't seem difficult. Just, uh, no, but uh, you've got to take. But like I just said, Joseph, you've got to take it one step at a time. Yeah, you know, you, you're going to start with a quantity but isn't moles, right? Always, you're starting with a quantity but isn't moles. Your your first waypoint is to find moles, and you've got to do whatever you can to do that. Now, if you're given a volume and a concentration, you have to you know you're going to have to multiply them together to get moles. That's what we've got over here, concentration times volume. Sometimes you'll have to convert that volume into liters, which is what we've done here. Then once, once you've got that, then you've got the moles. And that'd be the moles of Na2CO3 in this case. Then you've got to find the moles of what you're looking for by using the reaction and then convert that into the quantity that you want at the end, which is our volume in liters. Just take it take it one step at a time and I don't think you can really go too far wrong. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Well, let's look at uh, a slightly different setup here. We're looking for a mass of sodium hydroxide and we only have really numbers here for H3PO4, which we've got a volume and a concentration. So again, we're going to see this same kind of setup. You know, the more often you do these, you'll see it's really the same kind of thing happening. So in this instance, we've got a volume and a concentration of H3PO4. We know we need moles of H3PO4. So, you know, going back to our equation, we know we need to take the concentration and multiply it by the volume of solution in liters. So what we do, and just for kicks this time, I'll start off with the volume. Last time I started out with the concentration. So I'll take the volume, multiply it by the concentration. So milliliters, liters. We know that that doesn't cancel. So I'll do a conversion here. Put the mill, oops, uh, cancel that out put the liters on top, put the milliliters on the bottom. Liters will cancel one liter, a thousand mils. At this point, what I've done is I've found moles of h 3 pair of four. That's where we're at, we're at moles of A. Now we need moles of whatever we're looking for, which is sodium hydroxide. So we go for, so Zachary, you can see we're doing moles of NaOH here now on top because that's what we need next. And the moles of H3PO4 will go on the bottom to cancel what we just found. So looking at the relationship here, it's three moles of NaOH to one mole of H3PO4. At this point, I'm at moles of B, which is moles of NaOH. Anybody got any questions so far? So what am I looking for? I'm looking for mass. Well, how do I get there then? Well, it'll be grams of NaOH. Oops. 
and then moles of NaOH will go on the bottom to cancel the moles we found. And that'll be 40.08 grams divided by one mole. And that'll give us our mass, which in this case is 10.8 grams of sodium hydroxide. Okay, does anybody have any questions about this? Any questions at all? Any questions? Nobody, ha no, nobody has any worries about this, huh? Um, let's see, I think I've already done something like this. Let's go back here. Just check, let's see, are you looking for a, a volume? Yeah, so I've already done that. Okay. Yep, so we've already done something like that one. Let's look at some, look at this one here. What mass? Uh, we have already done that one too. All right, let's look at something like this. So with this one, you know, it, again, it, this one can be a little bit more challenging to figure out what are we starting with because we've got one number in front of each of these. We've got the same amount of information. But look at what the wording says, what volume of H2SO4. So we know that NaOH needs to be what we're going to start with. So that's that will be my, my first focus, 15.0 grams of NaOH. Then we'll have grams of NaOH in the, in the bottom here and moles of NaOH will be on top. Remember, that's what we want to find first. Be one mole of NaOH over 40.08 grams of NaOH. Any questions so far? So now that we've got moles of NaOH, we want to find moles of H2SO4. So I'll put moles of H2SO4 on top. And then moles of NaOH go on the bottom. And that'll cancel. And the relationship here is two moles of NaOH to one mole of H2SO4. So this is where I'm at here is moles of H2SO4. What am I looking for though? I'm looking for a volume. How do I get to a volume? Well, according to the equations, if I want a volume, I take the moles of solute, which is the moles of H2SO4 and divide it by the concentration. And I have a concentration there, 0.934 molar. So I know that is going to be one liter times one liter over 0.934 moles of H2SO4. And once all is said and done, all I'll be left with is liters. And the answer is 0 0.201 liters. Okay, does anybody have any questions? For that last part, is that where you did that flip again? Mm -hmm, that's right. Okay. But you know, you, the, part of the reason you know you need to do the flip is because you're given a molarity here. Do you see that, the DM? And to get to a volume, it's always moles divided by the concentration. So there's just, that's that one over concentration. That means you have to flip it. Okay. I know that's a, that, that's a tough one, but it does work out. It does, and it does make sense with regard to the dimensional analysis. OK, 
Okay, titrations are related to what we just talked about, but generally speaking, you know, when you're doing a titration, what you what you're effectively doing is you'll have a flask and you'll have a burette. This is a terrible diagram of a flask and a burette, by the way. And you'll have something in the flask that's being titrated and then something in the burette. And you'll have the, for this you'll have a volume and generally you'll have a concentration. In the flask, you'll have something you know the volume of, but you won't know, you won't know the concentration. And that's, that's the entire point of doing a, uh, doing a titration. So what we're looking for is generally a concentration. And it's whatever's in the flask that we're looking for here. So you can see 25.00 mils of HCl. That's in the flask. It's titrated with the volume because you know you read the volume off the burette and you also know what the concentration of the sodium hydroxide is, what you're using to titrate it. What's the, and we're looking for the molarity of the HCl solution. So we're starting off with the sodium hydroxide and again, we have to get moles of sodium hydroxide. That's our first, that's our first thing that we're looking for, is moles of sodium hydroxide. So what I'll do is I will multiply, so you're seeing the same pattern again, 0 0.5302 moles per litre times the volume, which is 35.56 mils. And we need to do a conversion here. So liters will be on top, milliliters will be on the bottom, one liter, a thousand mils. This allows us to get to moles of NaOH. It's what we're looking for first. The next thing we need is moles of HCl, All right? That'll be up here. moles of HCl, that's the second thing. Moles of NaOH go on the bottom. The relationship here is one to one. So one mole of NaOH, one mole of HCl. Next, we need a concentration, a molarity of HCl. Now to get a molarity, let's go back to the equations here. Molarity is concentration. So concentration, I know I will put here molarity as well is going to be moles divided by litres. Now, according to what I've got here, I've got moles and I need to divide by litres. So now it's times one over the volume given 25.00 mils. And then to get to moles per litre, I need to do a conversion here, millilitres and then litres. So 1000 mils and then one litre on the bottom. And that gives me my final answer. Which is 0 0.714 molar. HCl. All right, so with this one, you'll notice we don't do that whole flip thing because we're looking for concentration. We're not dividing by concentration. So to get to concentration, we take the moles and divide it by the volume. To divide it by the volume, I'm doing times one over the volume. Does anybody have any questions? So what's the whole point about the flip thing? The whole point about the flip thing is that that's when you that, that that's when you're looking for a volume at the end. Okay, that's when you're looking for a volume at the end. Here we're not looking for a volume; we're looking for a concentration. Thank you. So uh, take a look. At, see, do you see this one here? This this uh, example ten that we looked at earlier. You'll notice we had to do the flip thing here at the end. 
because we were looking for a volume. Do you see? In liters. Yeah. And here, we're not looking for that. We're looking for a concentration. That's right. the difference. And again, you got to take it one step at a time. Okay, thank you. Okay. And all of these, uh, these concentration type um, titration problems, they're all, they all take pretty much the same form here. Okay. Does anybody have any questions? All right, let's take a look at the assignment and some of the other things you'll need to do for the homework. So in the assignment, you'll be given problems. For example, here, you're actually told what one of the things is. So make sure that you look at the, you look at the setup here and already put in the things that are already there. Like four is number is one liter so that you know that's four. That will stop you mixing up what goes where. That's the reason I've, I've done this is so that, because you could technically put three and four where one and two is and still come out with the same answer at the end. But if I tell you where something is, then you need to abide by that and set up your your choices accordingly. And we've got this same thing going as what we had before where you've got the unused answer. You've got to make sure that the unused answer goes in where it needs to be. As you can see, they become pretty complicated when we get down to these kinds of problems and you've got nine things you need to put in the in the slots here all right but uh, you know it's, it's the same thing you, you do it on paper first and then you then you can figure out where things go all right Anybody got any questions about the assignment? Now keep in mind for the assignment, as I've told you before, go back to the content here. When we go back to the content, you can see that we have the assignment problems. There's a video for every single assignment problem. So if you're having trouble, you can look at the video and that will tell you how to set it up. The module 10 practice quiz. It's a similar setup to the other practice quizzes you've had before. In that what you're required to do is put in whatever's here and put whatever goes in each box. Same sort of setup. Okay, somebody needs to mute. I don't know who it is, but somebody needs to mute. Does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Okay. All right, so what we'll do on, on Monday is we'll go over uh, module 11 and then um, Wednesday be module 12 and if we have time any time left after module 12 which we might 
we might do some uh, we might do start doing some review then but then monday will be pretty much all review and then the the test would be due the following wednesday with homework being due on the tuesday night before that and i will after as soon as this class is over i'll fix the due dates to reflect that okay does uh, does anybody have any questions so the homework and so the homework and the test will be like due later in the month well it'll be due two days later yeah okay okay than what I've already got right now, yeah. Okay. Any 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 other questions? Okay. Well, I think we'll leave it there for today then, and I will talk to you all on Monday. Thank you, Professor. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Professor. See you on Monday. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you. See you Monday. Bye bye. Uh, thank Mark you. Graves. Yeah. I wanted to thank you again for the uh, extra time that we talked about the other day. I did get those assignments done yesterday. All right. Excellent. Thank you, Zachary. No problem. Have a good day. You too. Bye bye. Jeremy.